Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to be looking at day 18 of our red letter challenge in this week on forgiving. And frankly, today Jesus is going to give us a tough word, a word of law that frankly could be difficult for us. And so I'd like to read this for you. It's from Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. So if you want to take a moment to pause and turn there, uh, that'd be great. But here's what Jesus says in these red letters, starting Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. You, therefore, must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Frankly, as we hear these words from Jesus, especially that closing line, you must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Uh, I maybe can't speak for you, but for me, I kind of feel myself oppressed by this law. Jesus, how can I possibly measure up to this standard of perfection? Jesus, I can't possibly reach it. And you are right in that. I think as we look at this Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus continues to put forth this law for his people, he is also pointing to himself. He is saying, look, there's only one person that really can fulfill this, only one person who has done all of it, and it's me. He is pointing us to the cross and saying, look, you don't measure up. You need me. You need a Savior. But that doesn't negate the law that he is speaking. Just because it is difficult, just because we can't reach it, doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't want us to be striving to reach us. And so we have to look again at this phrase from Matthew chapter 5, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's a really tough word when we stop to think about it. I remember growing up, someone who I love dearly, someone who was very close to me, had been severely wounded. They had had a crime committed against them, and for a variety of reasons, they had not felt comfortable sharing this crime, and I was one of the few people who knew the truth of the story. Well, one day I found myself at church, and the person who had committed this crime, the perpetrator, was at church with me. And I felt just this deep hate, this deep anger welling up inside of me. How dare this person show their face in church after what they had done, after the crime that they had committed? How could they possibly be here before God with that on their conscience? I felt hate. And as we started saying the Lord's Prayer during that service, we got to the segment of that prayer where we pray together, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And I realized I couldn't say those words. My hatred for my enemy was keeping me from forgiveness. It's easy for us to hate our enemies. In fact, it feels like the natural human response. It's easy for us to hate those who have abused us, those who have persecuted us, those who have wounded us. It's easy for us to hate a coworker that went behind our back and got a promotion, or a friend who told a secret that we expected to remain in confidence. It truthfully is easy to hate our enemies. But Jesus calls us to a higher standard. 
He sets us on a higher playing field. He tells us that we are to love those people. Now, that doesn't mean we need to keep putting ourselves in the way of danger or abuse or harm, but even if we have experienced those awful things, those things that hurt us to our very core, we're still called to love that person. Just as Christ loved them, gave his life for them too. We're called to speak that love into their midst, that selfless, perfect love of Christ. As he hangs upon the cross, calls out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is the kind of love that we're called to have, even for our enemies. And so my challenge for you today is take a moment and think of someone who has hurt you. Perhaps there is some sin there that you have not yet forgiven, some sin that is still just clinging inside you, dragging you down, filling you with bitterness and rage and hate. And pray for that person. Maybe you won't be able to forgive them yet today, but take a moment to just pray for them to reach out in love, even where it's hard. I certainly pray that God will be with you in this time, then, that he will fill you with his spirit as we do these difficult words of Jesus. Amen.